Harry sneezes the phone and walks across the room, jumps up in your lap and says, Answer me, please. <laughs> Hello? If this is Alice, the Robbie's gone to the library. And if it's true, she's on his way. Oh, uh, pages 68 to 70. Yeah, all the inverted fractions. It's okay. Bye. That was Bonnie Mortensen. She's trying to get up enough nerve to ask me to do a dance, and so she pretends she forgot her homework assignment. Well, now, that's a nice, modest appraisal of the situation. <laughs> Why don't you melt that down into a napkin ring or something? Bobby, I think you've practiced enough. Why don't you put the trumpet to bed for the night? Okay, Dad. Dad? Mm-hmm. Can you tell me something? Well, I don't know. What is it, Chip? What was my mother like? Well, I've told you, Chip, but uh, maybe you've forgotten it was quite a while ago. Uh, what makes you ask right now? Well, you know Miss Berger, my teacher? Huh? She gave me a homework assignment to write a composition called What My Mother Means to Me. And I've been thinking about it all night, and I don't know what to write. Well, maybe Mrs. Bergen would let you write about something else, Chip. Boy, you don't know Miss Bergen. When she gives you a homework assignment, you better do it and don't ask questions. Well, I, I think if she knew you didn't have a mother, Chip, she'd, uh, she'd have given you another assignment. Would you like me to call her at school tomorrow? Heck no. Do you want all the fellas to think I'm a skunky kid or something? <laughs> a skunky kid? Yeah, that's a kid who lets his parents talk to the teacher. Oh, I see. Well, Chip, you had a wonderful mother. And she loved us all very much. I can remember so many things she used to do that... I really think you ought to talk to Mrs. Bergen, uh, Chip. Uh, maybe she'd even let you pick something you'd like to write about. But right now, I think uh, maybe you'd better scoot up to bed, huh? It's your bedtime. Boy, I better think of something by next week or else I'll get my name on the board for being a duty shirker. A duty shirker? Yeah, if you get three duty shirkers, you get sent to the principal's office. And he tells you how disturbed you're making him. <laughs> Good night, Chip. Good night, Dad. Aren't you supposed to be in bed? Oh, she was. Oh, she was the greatest. It's been a long time. I've forgotten a lot. Uh, why, Chip? I don't know. I was just wondering. Oh. She sure was pretty. What color was her hair? Well, I guess you'd say it's sort of halfway between yours and mine. Come in. Oh, hi, Mike. Uh, can I talk to you for a second? Sure. Uh, I'm afraid we got a problem. No, huh? Yeah, I'm kind of worried about Chip. Tonight he asked me all kinds of questions about Mom. Oh. It seems he's got a composition to write. Yeah, I know. I suggested that he uh, ask Miss Bergen if he couldn't write about something else. I... Even offered to call her, but he wouldn't let me. Well, he couldn't. He'd be a dirty rat if he did. No, no, they've changed that. Uh, this year, he'd be a skunky kid. <laughs> well, what did you uh, finally tell him? About Mom, I mean. Well, I, uh, I told him to work it out for himself. Oh, Dad, you didn't. Yeah, I'm afraid I did. Well, Dad, don't you know that you... Psychologically, you've got to give children answers. You, you probably led Chip down... Some dark canyon of frustration. Well, Tramp's probably with him, so... <laughs> Dad, I'm serious. I was just making a joke. You know, Mike, books are great for learning, but they can't always solve all our problems for us. I have enough faith in you and Rob to know that you can probably work most things out for yourselves. And I think maybe Chip's old enough now to do the same thing. Well... 
I think you're wrong. But uh, if you do follow up on this, you know, I'd be glad to help you in any way I can. Thanks, Mike. Good night. close to dinner time. What are you boys talking about? Chip's got to write a composition. Oh? What's in the box, Betsy? My new lizard. New lizard? You get that horrible beast out of my kitchen. Keepers, Mom. You heard what I said. Hubert Blakesley Pfeiffer, get it out of here. And go and practice your piano. Oh, God, Mom. I am not going to pay $3 a week for piano lessons so you can stare at a lizard. Now, do what I say before I really lose my temper. Fuzzy has to practice now, Chip. Yeah, I know. How come you make him play the piano? Because I think it's best for him. Yeah, but he hates it. That's really no affair of yours, Chip. Is that all you do is fix dinner and wash dishes and clean up junk? That's all any mother does, really, Chip. Suds, it'll be at least a half an hour at the piano. Yeah. Well, I better go get my lizard back. Oh, so it was your lizard. Yeah. He traded you for him. That's fine. What did you say, Chip? <laughs> well, see, I gotta write this composition called What My Mother Means to Me. And I don't have a mother, so I borrowed you. You borrowed me? Yeah, I thought it'd be okay if I borrowed you to write about. Well, I'd better go get my lizard. You do no such thing. Sudsy, how can you sit in there playing a piano when you have a guest? I'll call your house and tell him you're staying for dinner. What happened? I don't know. <laughs> oh, Sudsy. I told you the next time you left your bike in the driveway that you couldn't ride it for a week. You're lucky I didn't run over it. Oh, gee, Dad, I just forgot. It wasn't his fault, honey. He started to move it, but I asked him to empty the trash. What are you talking about? You clobbered him for leaving his bike in the driveway last week. You mustn't exaggerate in front of Sudsy's gift. Oh, it's okay, Mr. Pfeiffer. Ow! What's happened now? I cut my finger. The way you were cutting that meat, I'm surprised you didn't cut your hand off. Let me see. <laughs> oh, for heaven's sake, Ruth, it's nothing. Oh, Sudsy cuts his finger and you say it's nothing. <laughs> Come on, Sudsy, dear. Let Mother take you out and put a little antiseptic on it. What's going on around? Young man. Hi. Hi. Hi, Richard. Hi, Squirt. Let's do the oral lessons. Well, how's the dinner? Real neat. Hey, Dad, you know what? What? We had dessert first and it sure makes the rest of the stuff taste better. <laughs> Hey, what happened to these pants? Oh, I stopped to shinny up a tree in front of Sudsy's house. I guess I shinny down faster than I shinny it up. I just passed those pants last week. Hey, uh, pull the pants leg up. Let's take a look at the knee. Yeah, hey. Yeah, you skinned it a little. You better go up and wash the chip and uh, put a little antiseptic on it. Hmm? Is there anybody going to help me? Oh, don't be a baby chip. No, maybe we should hire a trained nurse. I think you're old enough to do it yourself. It sure would be neat to have a mother. There, you see? I tell you, Dad, we have a problem. Yeah. I wish you had a mother too, Chip. But you don't. I know you think things are kind of rough around here once in a while, but... Most of the time, they're not too bad, are they? 
When Suds' his father yells at him, his mother always sticks up for him. Around here, nobody's on my side. Oh, we're all on your side, Chip. No, you're not. And I'll just bet you that when Sudsy does something really wrong, his mother doesn't always stick up for him. I didn't do anything wrong. But you all yelled at me. I didn't mean to tear my pants. We know you didn't mean to. And look, Chip, even a mother sometimes gets angry with her children, but that doesn't mean she doesn't love them. Yeah. Spiker did get pretty sore about the lizard. Oh, well, you see? It's only Sir Tail Mary with some Raymond for his eyes. <laughs> Now, oh, Chipper, I think things will look a little brighter in the morning. Yeah, I guess so. I think I better try a few more mothers before I start writing. <laughs> Good night, Chipper. How come you just flop on the bed with your shoes on? I don't know. Lying there with your feet all over the spread. You don't know, huh? Well, if you slip into your pajamas and uh, wash your hands and brush your teeth and get into bed in about two and a half minutes... I'll tell you a story about how I wiped out a whole Indian band all by myself. And goodbye, Beulah, dear. Mm-hmm. Hi, Mom. Hello, children. Oh, Diane, honey, I got so tired out this morning at the beauty parlor that I didn't have a chance to make the bed. Would you run up and do that for Mother, dear? But first, would you wash the breakfast dishes and set the table for dinner? And Chip... While Diane is busy, why don't you grab that carpet sweeper over there and run it up and down the hall a few times? <laughs> and darling, when you're through with the beds, bring Mother her purse. <sighs> the traffic was so heavy on the way home this morning that I didn't stop at the market. And I thought you and Chip could pick up some frozen TV dinners for tonight. Okay? <laughs> That's a good girl. I think I've borrowed her long enough, Diane. I'll see you later. <laughs> Gee, you got a lot of toys. Yeah, my mom bought them for me. Weren't you sick or something? No. Nah. She brings me stuff like this all the time. Want to play train? Sure. See, that's me. You want to run it? Okay. Where's your mom? This is her day for playing bridge. She won't get home till after dinner. You mean you have to eat alone? Yeah, but she leaves junk for me to heat up. Where's your dad? He travels all the time because he has to sell stuff. Can I come over tomorrow and see your mom? No, because that's her day for golf. I've got enough track to go clear out to the garage. That's well, Freddie. How about the next day? No, because then she goes to the beach club. I got the neatest mom in the whole world. Yeah, Freddie, you sure have. Hey, Rob, how do you spell spinach? Spinach. S-P-I-N-I-C-H. <laughs> Heck, I had it wrong. I had S-P-I-N-A-C-H. <laughs> what are you writing? My composition. What composition? The one about what my mother means to me. I borrowed a whole bunch of mothers, but they're all clunky. Hey, Chip, watch how I can make my bicep muscle jump. Yeah. Rob? Yeah? We still had our mother. You think she'd spank us? Well, sure. If we got out of line. That's what mothers are for. What else are they for? Oh, I don't know. All kind of junk. Do they tuck you in and make you say your prayers and... Tell your stories and stuff? I suppose so. You know, Chip, you shouldn't sit around so much. You're going to turn into a ten-year-old ball of flat. <laughs> I guess they're always kissing their kids, huh? Oh. Mothers. Yeah, I suppose so. I don't remember too much about it. This is a good exercise for your leg muscles. Do they let you have dogs? <laughs> well, some of them do and some of them don't. Hey, what are you doing? Writing down everything I tell you? Some of it. I'm leaving out the junk about your muscles, though. <laughs> well, how can you write a composition about mothers when you don't even have them? Well, it isn't easy. <laughs>
to school in 20 minutes. Come on. Glad that I gotta get somebody to go to the dance with. Betty J. Mass just called down. I need to work on that later. You haven't even got your shoes on. But what's so important about going to a PTA meeting for chess class? We've already settled that. Now, here are your shoes and the shoehorn. Now, get them on. But, gee, Dad, why do I have to go to all of his meetings when it was better enough going to all of mine? What are you moaning about? I had to go to all mine, all yours, and all chips. Well, if you want to look at it that way, I had to go to all mine, all yours, all Robbie's, and all chips. You guys are pikers. They voted me a life membership. <laughs> about this one? Mrs. Bergen sent a note home saying the Douglas family has a surprise in store for it, so we're all going to be there. Settled? Settled. Settled? Oh, settled. Settled? I'm on the early settled. All right. Hello? Oh, hi, buddy. Oh, listen, I can't talk to you right now because uh, we got to go to this PTA thing and Chip's going to meet us there at school and, and it's all big deal. Well, yes, go to the dance. Why don't you just stood up? Oh, I, uh, Barney and I was just thinking, um, uh, do you suppose you could go to the dance with me next Friday? Who is he? <laughs> okay, but it's up to you. Yeah, so long. That's enough. She's not calling just for the assignments. She probably doesn't know anybody else. It isn't a toll call. Oh, boy, how funny can you get? Let's oh, it's go. Uh, and that concludes the business part of our PTA meeting. May I express my thanks that so many mothers and fathers turned out tonight. And now it's my pleasure to introduce to you one of our school's most popular teachers who has a surprise for you, Mrs. Rhoda Bergen. Thank you. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I recently gave my classes an assignment to write a composition on what my mother means to me. Now, this was not in the nature of a contest, but one of the compositions touched me so deeply that I'd like to share the experience with you. Chip Douglas, would you come up on stage, please? I've been teaching children for many years, and as most of you may know, I'm now teaching the fourth grade, where Chip is spending so many uh, happy hours. Right, Chip? Miss Bergen, I think I'm going to be sick to my stomach. <laughs> Chip, would you read your composition entitled, What My Mother Means to Me? What My Mother Means to Me by Chip Douglas. Lots of mothers cook fancy. They put creamy stuff on spinach so you can't taste it. Mine doesn't do that. When we have spinach, we sure have spinach. If we don't like the food, my mother gives the table a big smack and says, if it's good enough for the Navy, it's good enough for you. My mother yells at us sometimes, but it's okay, because my mother also makes lots of things fun. Once in a while, we get to have pillow fights, and my mother pretends not to notice us unless we bust one of the pillows. My mother lets us have a dog right in the house with us, even though sometimes he's a lot of trouble on account he has long hair. I also get to have lizards and turtles and all kinds of things, because my mother isn't afraid of bugs. When it's time to go to bed, my mother makes me say my prayer and tucks me in and tells me stories about Indians. Also, I think I've got the only mother on that block who can throw a football 40 yards. My mother never goes to beauty parlors on account of my mother's bald headed. We have a happy home because we have a real neat mother. I mean, my grandfather, Mr. Bubble Casey. I don't think we have any trouble anymore. Well, I think maybe we have a little. Huh. Well, that was quite an evening, wasn't it, Bob? Mm. Good. Say, confidentially, uh, can you throw a football 40 yards? Well, just to keep the record straight, no. <laughs> well, hi, Chip. What are you two eating? 
That great big fat ounce of ice cream you kids saved for us after the PTA brawl. Yeah, I don't think she'd have you more. And why aren't you asleep? The whole light's on. Don't you know how to turn a switch off? Oh, well, come on, come on. Thank you. Good night, Jim. Oh, Jim, I'm very proud of you. Thank you, Dad. Good night. Good night. Well, I'm sure I can get a reservation on the 10 o'clock plan. Oh, you've already made it for me. <laughs> okay, goodbye. Hey, Steve. Hmm? I just got a telegram from old Flats Jensen. He's sick again. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that, bud. Yeah, uh, so I'll have to be leaving you for a few days. Well, when do you plan on leaving? Right now. He not only needs a nurse, but he's got to have somebody to run that theater for him over there in Plainview. Yeah. I just told Ed Drake I'd be on the 10 o'clock plane to Minneapolis. Oh, gosh, can't you put it off? I hate like the Dickens to think of poor old Flats lying there sick and nobody to take care of him. I know, Bob. You've got to go. I'll, uh, I'll call Ed back. Maybe I can make some other arrangements. Well, I wish you could. Well, why don't you both go? Oh, we can't very well both go, Mike. Well, why not? I haven't got any more classes this week. I'll take care of the house. Well, it's a big responsibility. What responsibility? Is <laughs> sitting around the house all day waiting for Chip and Rob to come home from school? Is that all you think I do around here? <laughs> of course not. I know there's a little more to it than that. But... A little more? I wish you had an idea of all that goes on around here. Uh, he didn't mean it that way, Bob. When I spoke of responsibility, Mike, I didn't mean housework. Although that is important. <laughs> I meant, uh, well, there are problems that could come up. Oh, look, Dad, if I'm old enough to, to go to college and, and shave and be eligible for the draft, then I think I can handle any little crisis that would come up around here. Wait a minute. Just because you've got a B-plus in debating, don't think you can push your dad around, Junior. No, Mike's not going to work, Bob. As hard as it is for us to believe, uh, he is an adult. Don't be ridiculous. Why, it was just the other day we canceled his diaper service. <laughs> uh, Bob, if, uh, if I had a friend from my vaudeville days who was calling to me from a sickbed, uh, I wouldn't stand around shooting a breeze. I'd pack. Mm -hmm. He's an adult, all right. A sneaky adult. <laughs> now, Mike, uh, I gave you the money, didn't I? Oh, yeah, I'm all set. Don't worry about us, Dad. Yeah, we'll be okay. Uh, Dad, uh, will you tell them once more before you leave? I want to make sure they get the message. Mike is the boss. You fellas understand. Now, remember, you eat when he says, you go to bed when he says, and you do your homework when he says. Okay. You hear that? Yeah, but tell me, can't smack us. Ah, oh, smack him. But Rob, did I ever yes, hit you? Yes, you have. Well, I never hit you, did I? No, but the temptation might be too much. No, we don't want to expect Goodbye. Goodbye, Dad. Just use good common sense and everybody get along fine. Now remember to wash your ears. We'll be back as soon as we can. Goodbye, Mike. So Bye. long. Bye, gang. Bye. Boy, this is going to be neat. What do you think you're doing? Now get upstairs and get dressed for school. Oh, Mike, all you have to do is just write a note to Miss Ferguson. Yeah, and tell her he's got crayon poisoning. Okay, come on, Chip, upstairs. Oh, that's all we need around here is a brother who thinks he's a dad. <laughs> Wouldn't you know he'd start goofing off the minute above and dad got out of sight? Yeah. I can just see myself writing an excuse. Yeah. Hey, what are you reading your Spanish book for? Oh, I figured I'd catch up on my studies. I'm way behind. Yeah, well, you'll be late for school. you got to get going in ten minutes. Well, I thought I'd catch up on all my back Spanish, yeah. 
Oh, gee, then I gotta start memorizing those 24 lines from Shakespeare. In 10 minutes? Oh, brother, and I gotta put about 12 theorems in my notebook, and after that, I gotta... All start... right, Robbie, <laughs> upstairs. Oh, listen, Mike, I'm not trying to goof off like Chiba. I just figured I'd put in the whole day catching up. I'm supposed to write an excuse, I suppose. Heck no, I'll write it. You just sign it. <laughs> Look, Rob, you and Chip better get this through your heads. Just because Bob and Dad aren't here doesn't mean you're gonna get away with anything. Quit shoving, will you? What do you think you are, some kind of a Tiberius Caesar or something? You're probably the kind of guy that, that would become a dictator if you were given just an inch of power or something. Yeah, well, I'm not a, a peasant or a serf or one of those slave girls or anything. Well, I'd love to. Oh, no, I, I can't go tonight. Well, that's another part of the deal. Dad's paying me extra for babysitting. I'm gonna come out of this thing smelling like a rose. A rich rose. Oh, wait a minute. Don't uh, come in. Uh, somebody's here. Can I call you back? Oh. Hello. Hello, dear. Are you folks home? Uh, no, they're not, but, uh, I'm running the house. Good for you! <laughs> Why I'm here is, I need votes. Votes? Yes, dear. It's a kind of a neighborhood personality poll thing. If I get enough votes, I get a free trip to Rome. Well, if it'll do any good, I'll vote for you. You will? Well, sure. What do I have to do? Well, that'll cost you three dollars for two years' subscription. <laughs> any magazine on the list. The monthly magazines are a dollar extra. The bi-monthlies you get for the week. Hello. Oh, uh, hello, Miss Bergen. No, they're not. But uh, I'm Chip's guardian for the next few days. You want me to come down to school now? What did Chip do? I'll tell you what he did. Chip was an uncooperative citizen during recess. He was? We were choosing sides for a softball game, and he refused to be chosen by Mary Lou here. Yeah? The school can only go so far in these disciplinary problems, Mr. Douglas. And then we feel it's time to call in the parents or the guardians. Yeah, well, sure. Uh, Chip, why didn't you want to be on Mary Lou's team? Because she cheats. I do not. You do, too. If her team's losing, she beats everybody up until she wins. She beats up the boys, too? Sure, she's a real terrible girl. <laughs> Chip Douglas. Do you... Do you want to lose some petals from your courtesy daisy? Oh, <laughs> man. Then you better apologize to Mary Lou. Well, come on. Get it over with. I gotta get home and make a shopping list. Well, I don't think getting it over with is the point in question, Mr. Douglas. Chip must realize that he must be courteous to a lady. Oh, yeah. Uh, Chip, you shouldn't go around telling people that this little girl beats people up. But she does. Last week she knocked William Toomey's teeth clear across the basketball court. <laughs> Chip Douglas, I'm sure that if that were true, William Toomey would have come to me and told me. No, he wouldn't. Who wants everybody to know that a girl can knock your teeth that far? <laughs> All right, Chip. Now I'll apologize to Mary Lou. I'm sorry. Well, fine. Now you may both go out and enjoy the rest of your gymnasium period. I'm glad you could come over, Mr. Douglas. I, I didn't like to come over. What's the big idea? Didn't I ask you to come straight home from school today? No, you can't stay over at Hank's. <laughs> Look, Rob, I want you guys to stick close to home while Dad and Bub are away. I don't care how many driver's licenses Hank has. You come home. All right, all right. Bring him with you. But you be here in 20 minutes. Okay. 
All right, you guys, scram. Well, stay out of those cookies. I thought it was I already got halfway down my throat. Yes. Can Sarge stay for dinner? Oh, I don't know, Chip. Rob's bringing Hank over, and I just bought a little hamburger. You want me to go in the other room so you can talk about me? <laughs> no, Sonny, you can stay. Okay. My mom says I can stay all night, too. Let's go. Uh, hey, Chip. Cut it out, will you? Oh, I don't know. Hang on. She says, how come your dad didn't buy an automatic shift? Well, I don't know. I guess he likes the other kind better. Dee, 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 dee. He yeah. doesn't know. I guess he likes the other kind better. Yeah. Okay, you guys. Table's clear. How about somebody getting his carcass in the kitchen and washing the dishes? Okay, man. We'll be buying in a while. Oh, don't worry about that. Hank's a real good driver. I said, how about somebody getting in the kitchen and washing the dishes? Yeah, we'll be over in a little while. <laughs> this time, I'm not asking. I'm telling. Oh, yeah. He needs a little work on his parallel park now. <laughs> yeah. Hey, come on, I was just talking to Merlin Turn Thurston. I don't care if you're talking to Betsy Ross. Now, I had a day around here that won't quit. I had to go down and get Chip out of a jam at his school, do the shopping, cook the stupid meal, and if somebody doesn't get in there and do something, they're gonna get belted. Boy, he sounds just like my mother. <laughs> Hank, I'm sorry, but you better leave. Chip and Sudsy, get in the dining room, start your homework. And Robbie, get in that kitchen. Now, wait a minute. Why are you I just told you. Principal. Okay, okay, I'm going, I'm going. But you just better enjoy this while you can, man, because one of these days I'm going to put on about 30 pounds, and, and then you better watch out, Mabel. Hello? Oh, hi, Dad. Hi, Mike. I just thought I'd call up and see how everything went the first day. Uh, swell. We uh, just finished dinner, and Chip and Suds here studying, and Rob's doing the dishes. Robbie's washing the dishes? Now, how did you arrange that, Mike, and how you want the truth? Well, it's, it's not what you're thinking. I mean, all I did was talk to him. I may have gotten a little loud, but uh, all I used was words. Well, that's all right. Uh, Chip and Sudsy are doing their homework, huh? Yeah, Sudsy's spending the night. Oh, no, I don't think that's such a good idea, Mike. Uh, I think maybe you better send Sudsy home. Why? What can happen? Well, a lot of things can happen. I mean, uh... <laughs> maybe you're right. Well, I'll get away from here as soon as I can. Quit worrying, will you, Dad? I've got everything under control. I'm sure you have, Mike. I'll see you. Goodbye. Okay, goodbye. Mike, what do I do if the sink's all stopped up and there's water running all over the kitchen? Well, don't just stand there. Relax. 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 It, it didn't happen. I just wondered what I'd do if it did happen. Hardy, hard, hard. <laughs> I got a stroke of cockeye or something. Well, you don't feel hot. What does your mother used to do when you got here? She just puts a towel by my bed and goes back to sleep. <laughs> hey, Sergeant, what are you doing here? I'm sick. I want to go home. Okay, Sergeant. I hate to wake your folks at this time of night. We had a plain dinner. I don't think that could have made you sick. Maybe you put too much honey on your hamburgers. Yeah. You put honey on your hamburgers? Yeah. But why? Because we couldn't find the pot of sugar. <laughs> I don't think he's sick. He's just scared because he's sleeping over at somebody else's house. Call him back to bed. Come on, son. We'll call your folks. If a lady answers, it'll be my mother, because my father's in Chicago. <laughs> oh, 
Hello? Oh, hello, Miss Pfeiffer. This is Mike Douglas. I'm sorry to waken you at this time of night, but Sudsy says he's sick. Sick? What's the matter? Oh, I don't think it's anything too serious. He's got a stomach ache. Says he has a streptococcus and wants to come home. Well, there's nothing to worry about, Mike. He probably had a nightmare and he's just a little frightened. Oh. Well, uh, what'll I do? Well, I'll tell you what we do when this happens. We let him sleep with one of us. You do? <laughs> if it worries you, I'll come over and get him. Oh, no, that, that's, a, that's okay, Miss Pfeiffer. Thank you. Good night. and cereal and toast. Yeah, but if we're late once more, Miss Bergen's gonna cut our throats. Not only that, she'll take three petals off our prom, Miss Daisy. <laughs> See you. Bye. I had a very nice time at your house. Thank you. <laughs> well, I suppose you haven't got enough time to eat, either. Oh, sure, I got plenty of time. Hank's picking me up in his dad's car. Hank's father sure is generous with that car. Well, it's not that. It's mainly that his dad is in Europe. <laughs> hey, Mike, if Merlin turns her and calls, tell her I'll be over right after dinner. But you won't. Well, she's expecting me. I told her that we could horse around with Shakespeare for English lit. Well, just make plans to horse around with Shakespeare over here, will you? Oh, come on, Mike. Quit playing Papa, will you? I'm not playing Papa, Robbie. I'm trying to do what I think is best. I told you guys I want you to stay here where I can keep an eye on you. You know what's wrong with you, Mike? You've got a big head complex. Now, what's wrong with going over King Lear with Marilyn? There's nothing wrong with it, only you're not doing it on my time. Yeah, I suppose I do. Look, Rob, don't you understand that Dad left me here to look after you guys, and I want Dad and Bub to come back and find everything just the way they left it. There's something to this responsibility bit that I didn't know about before. All you really want is to foul me up with, with Merlin and Hank and all my friends. How do you think it sounds when I tell them I can't stay out because I have to report home to my big brother? I don't care how it sounds. You're going to do it. I don't care. You can hate me all you want, but only don't call it responsibility. Wait a minute, Rob. Rob! Hello? Oh. Hi, Bub. Hi. I just thought I'd check and see how things are going. Uh, fine. Are you getting the kids off to school all right? Yeah. As a matter of fact, uh, Rob just went out the door this minute. Just <laughs> left this minute? Why, well, he'll be late. Oh, no. He's uh, He's got a ride this morning. Hank's picking him up in his dad's car. But you shouldn't let him drive with Hank, Mike. Hank's got a license. It's not that. He's too tall. By the time that brain of his sent a message to his feet, the car could be up a tree. <laughs> They'll be all right. You can't run a house full of boys on that premise, Mike. You've got to work with the idea that everything they do will get them into trouble. That way you're way ahead every time they get home safe. Look, Rob can take care of himself. Now, 
Now, Marilyn, are you sure you haven't seen Robbie? Well, all right. If you do see him, you tell him to get home right away because he's in big trouble. Okay, thanks, Marilyn. I'm hungry. Well, I'm sorry, but we can't eat until we find out what's happened to Robbie. What did Hank's mother say again when you asked her? Well, she said Hank didn't come home either. You think Robbie's okay? Oh, yeah, sure. Then how come you look worried? I'm not worried. Yes, you are. No, I'm not. <laughs> I better call Hank's mother myself. Hello? Uh, this is Troy Cooper, boys' vice principal at Bryant High School. Are Robert Douglas's parents there? Well, I'm his parents, Mr. Cooper. Uh, uh, that is, I'm, I'm in charge of him. Well, uh, I'm sorry to have to tell you this, but there was an accident at the high school. Accident? Yes. Robert and Henry Ferguson were involved in setting up the temporary bleachers on the athletic field. Uh, the entire structure collapsed. Collapsed? Well, where is he? He's here at Mercy Hospital. Mercy Hospital. Well, thanks, Mr. Cooper. Goodbye. Now, look, uh... Robbie and Hank have had a little accident. I'm going to have to go to the hospital. And I think you'd better go over to Sudsy's house. Is Robbie hurt? I don't know. Now get going. I want to come, too. Look, Chip, I, I think it'd be better if you went to Sudsy's. No, he's my brother, too. Chip, I want you to go to Sudsy's house. No. Look, I haven't got time to argue about it. All right, come on. No luck? Uh, nobody will answer. How's your friend? Oh, Hank, uh, he, he's doing okay. The doctor said we could go home right after he finishes putting in the stitches. Oh, you boys were lucky. We just admitted two boys a few minutes ago who were in an accident, too. Only they're in critical condition. Oh, gee, that's too bad. Yes, it is. You should be very thankful. Oh, I am. Well, I better go back and see how Hank's doing. Howdy. Hi. Hey, how are those two boys in emergency? They're in pretty bad shape, but they'll make it. Oh, you'll have to go up to the second floor if you want coffee. The percolator down here blew out. Good. I need the exercise anyway. Yeah. How's my brother? Well, who, who's your brother, son? The one who was in the accident with the other kid. Oh, uh, uh, both boys are doing fine. What do you mean, doing fine? What's wrong with my brother? Shh, please, just sit over there. You don't understand. We had a fight. My father is... Please, tell me, what's wrong with my brother? The doctor's with them now, and as soon as I know anything, I'll Emergency. let you know. Please, young man, just sit here, and I'll find out what I can. You too, honey. But we've got to find out how Robbie is. Robbie? Robert Douglas, that's his name. Wait a minute. I want to check something in the office. Stay there. Oh, pardon me. Robbie! 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 Hi, Robbie! Robbie! Man, what are you guys so excited you're, about? Oh, you don't know what we've been through. You me just too. don't know. Oh, you're all... oh, we thought... We... Oh, Rob! You're all... okay. Come on, you guys. She's watching. <laughs> Mike, do you suppose if I was real careful, maybe I could go over and see so What are you eating? Well, an apple. Well, look how green it is. Go get another one. That'll give you a stomach ache. <laughs> Oh, come on, Mike. Quit being such a mother hen, will you? Well, somebody has to worry about you, and don't run up those stairs two at a time. You'll have to bust your ankle. Yes. <laughs> Where are you going, Chip? I'm going over Sudsy's. Well, have Sudsy come over here, huh? Yeah, but Papa always lets me go over there. Look, Chip, you'd have to cross two streets. The Rasmussens have a new dog that I'm not too sure about, and, and it looks like it could rain outside. Hey, anybody home? Hi! Hi, Hi. 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 Expected a greeting like this. We've only been gone for a few days. Yes, yes, yes. Yes. How's it go, Mike? Well, fine. Just as smooth as silk. Now? Yeah, it's been like being in jail around here lately. Yeah? Well, Mike thinks we're going to break an arm just combing our hair. Yeah, and he wouldn't even let Tramp chase cats. <laughs> all right, you guys. You're all in one piece, aren't you? 
Yeah, well, you, you practically had to lock us in the closet well, you to do it. You can go over the if you like. Yeah! Watch out! Yeah, Rob, you can go over to Hank's if that's what's on your mind. It is. I better, better go, I better go and see if my kitchen's still there. Well, of course it is, and it's in good shape, it too. Better. It is. Oh, boy. Is it always like this? Like what, Mike? Well, I mean, when you're a father, do you always have to think of where your kids are and what they're doing? Well, I don't think quite as much as you seem to have, Mike, but uh, they're always on your mind. It has something to do with uh, parental love. Love? You know something? I was better off thinking they were a couple of pests. <laughs> Thanks for watching. We'll see you next week when, once again, Chevrolet, in behalf of your local authorized Chevrolet dealer, presents my three sons. <laughs>